do you have piles and piles and piles of handmade cards in your craft room, but you don't know what to do with them all? Hi, I'm Jess from JessCrafts.com and I'm here to help you make the most of your crafty supplies in time. So let's take a look. Today I have for you five suggestions for what to do with all of those cards you've made. First thing that I would encourage you to do is to send your cards. Duh, thanks Jess, thank you, to send our cards. Sorry, I mean some of these are gonna be kind of obvious, right? Like, because, but it's how, how do you make that more easy? That's what I wanna focus on, yes. So, I suggest keeping a list of occasions. So, what are the reasons that you send cards? Whether it's keeping a list of the birthdays, anniversaries, holidays, because you know, yeah, Father's Day's in June, but like, which Sunday, the third Sunday, how do you calculate, you know what I mean? Like. It's helpful. So I created this as a freebie and you can just print this off and write them down. There's many other ways to track this. Some people like to put it in their phone. I kind of started doing that, but then it like will only tell you the day of and then it's too late to send a card or it'll send tell you the day before, but then it sends me it 16 times and I don't really know why because I'm not technologically savvy. Um, so keeping a list of occasions and addresses will help. Um, so this is a freebie and you can um, check that out in the video description below but I put together a whole little package of some other things to help you with sending cards um, people to celebrate and I wrote down a spot for their birthday so if you're someone who likes to send birthday cards or just a simple address list because I know not everyone sends birthday cards or celebrates birthdays and then because I don't know about you but sometimes I have trouble sending cards and so maybe something like a fun tracker to color would be helpful so if you have a goal of like sending 10 cards per month you could put this up you know somewhere in your craft room and every time you send a card color in a box and by the end of the year have this really cute colorful box of your a colorful um paper of your accomplishments and so I have it for 10 cards a month 20 cards 30 cards or just straight up 100 cards you know so that you could just keep track one time and if you don't like boring boxes I also made it into some pretty hearts that you can print out for one each month so like that's 10 cards 20 and 30 and then each month you could have one up on your craft room wall or whatever to encourage you to you know actually put some stuff in the mail but how are we gonna okay what are the other things like how we got the we got the addresses we got the occasions okay how do we actually get them out the door I suggest keeping all your supplies together so your stamps your address label your own address and the people that you want to send it to so yes you have your address label you have your special stamp that stamps your address maybe but there's probably people in your life who you send multiple cards to. Your parents, your grandkids, something like that. And so print their address too on some of those printable labels. I don't want to show you anything like that because I want to show you, I should have made up like a fake address to show you, but I have my business address and so that I don't have to um, write it out each time. I just have them and I put some sticky tape behind them and then I can peel it off and stick it right on my envelope. Um, but you know what? Get the Avery label, do it right. Um, just the others, and so I have all my stamps together. I have international stamps and I have extra ounce stamps and all of that so I never have an excuse. If I'm like, hmm, this card is extra thick. Is, it, is one stamp going to do? I just slap one of the extra ounces on it and I've never had a problem. So, because those I think are like, just not a couple of cents, but they're pretty inexpensive for that additional ounce, which is better than doing like two stamps because they're much more expensive. But anyway, um, my last tip on that is if you want someone to send cards to frequently, send cards to kids. Kids love getting cards. Kids love sending mail, having something in the, in the mailbox with their name on it. They'll send you a card because it's Tuesday. And when you send them a card back because it's Thursday, they don't care. You don't need an occasion. You just have fun. Number two, it's going to be a shock for all of you who watch my channel, donate your cards. I, I mean, if you have a pile of cards, this is probably the fastest way to get rid of them. I have a webpage at JessCrafts.com. You know, they're all going to like, I can never remember like the longer links, but they're always in the video description. And it tells you all kinds of cool organizations that you can donate to your cards to. Unfortunately, most of them are in the U.S. I've tried to source sources outside of the US, different people who want cards. Most of these places actually even send cards internationally, but they collect them in the US. And I know the postage would be like 
astronomical on that, but um, maybe contact some local hospitals, local care facilities, things like that. Um, and they would maybe be willing to accept donations. Also, people have like donated cards to like a thrift store, like say, um, you know, you really like the the charity that your local, I think they actually call them just charity shops in the UK or whatever. But like, you know, you have this like local shop that like they resell stuff and that money then gets donated to the organization. You could offer some of your handmade cards for them to sell. So that would be a way of like donating them, but yet they would still be sold. Maybe that would be a good idea, especially if you felt uncomfortable reaching out to a hospital or something like that. So beyond those organizations that are listed there, you go to justcrafts.com and you print a bunch of jokes. These are free. Um, you don't even have to enter your email for these. I want to keep them so, so easy to access. Uh, there's a web page. It has like them listed by certain categories. I have seasonal jokes for, um, and I have like just general ones. I have a whole bunch of animal ones. I love critters. We all know that. So I have a lot of animal jokes. Recently, someone asked me to add mice because there's a lot of mouse stamps out there. Lawn fawn, house mouse, that kind of thing. So please feel free to leave me your suggestions. If there's a type of joke you I don't have, I am willing to go around and collect some and make them printable for you. I have holiday jokes. I have jokes in Spanish. A lot of organizations will accept and request cards in different languages. I only have Spanish and English because I only, like, I know, I knew people who were fluent speakers who could help me with Spanish. Perhaps there's another language that one of you all know and you could help me with figuring out jokes for that or something. You know, reach out, email me, leave me a comment, etc. When you donate, my big question again, do I need to send envelopes? You can see all these have envelopes. These are headed to scrapbook.com's Cards for Kindness. They do request envelopes. So these have envelopes. Cards for kids, cards for hospitalized kids. Do not, maybe sending smiles for seniors. I don't know, you don't quote me on it. All the different organizations have different requirements. They don't all need envelopes. So if you don't want to have the added expense of envelopes, then find one that doesn't need them. If you don't mind, Buy your envelopes in bulk. Keep it easy. You know, buy just a whole bunch of white envelopes. And um, I don't have like a super good source right now for that because I haven't, I used to buy them like thousand packs when I donated to Operation Right Home. And it would take me a long time to use it, but my mom and sister helped me when, because they made cards too. So we did actually go through a lot more. But anyway, um, buying them in bulk can save you a lot of money and make the process a lot easier. And then send your cards and big old flat rate envelope. Again, this is really like a US thing, but I get these flat rate boxes and you can just fit so many cards in them. And that's gonna save you so much on shipping versus like sending 10 cards at a time. And these boxes are getting expensive. I think when I started it was like 13, maybe 12 something to send one of these. Now it's 17, but it's still way cheaper than in sending smaller stacks of cards. And then also just maybe donate locally to save on shipping. Because if you found like a local organization, then you wouldn't have to pay that 17 bucks or whatever to send your cards off. Is selling your cards. I have technically done this in the past. It, I had very mixed success. I tried craft fairs, I tried Etsy, and it's just, it's slow, you know? And I can bring a lot of joy by donating my cards. And also like when you sell, especially when you sell online, you have to take a picture of each individual card. I actually do that for the most part because I post them on my blog or my YouTube channel. So a lot of times I will be taking the pictures, but then you got to write out individual descriptions for everything. But then you know, there are other people who've had a lot of success. I think it's Bourbon Creek Crafts. She does craft shows. And so I'll, if, if that's, if I'm remembering correctly, I'll link her too. Maybe she has some better advice. But you can sell in person at craft shares, local shops. A lot of our local coffee shops in this area will sell cards. They're not necessarily handmade like these so much as like artist prints or something, but I think they'd be open to that. Or there's car, um, shops that only sell things that have been made by local people. And so that would be a good fit. And then of course you just sell them to family and friends. You know, there's plenty of times where they're willing to purchase them as well. If you have some more specialty cards, you don't just want, like you're having a hard time selling, you don't want to sell, but you don't quite want to just give them away. Maybe encouraging friends and family to shop your stash, not necessarily like to buy them, but like for them to give out, that might feel like, you know, you're, I don't know, for some reason, sometimes it's easier to give something to a friend because you'll know how much they appreciate it. So if you have that excess number of cards, maybe sorting them 
by their like theme so that when somebody says, oh, you know, I need a birthday card, you can send them into your birthday card section. This was created at a time where I was much more ambitious. I'm not very good at this and I don't really have a lot of friends and family who will like ask for cards from me. I mean, I guess if you, if you know me and you're watching this video, <laughs> let me know. But um, maybe even like keeping like a handful of uh, birthday cards or thank you cards in, you know, your car or something like, or your purse <laughs> and then like just passing them out. Like, um, we yeah, we gotta get our cards into the hands of people even if it is to give to more people. And I know a lot of people also like when they send cards, they'll put like a sticky note inside so someone can send it on again. That's really cool. Last but not least, fifth idea, gift them. I know it's like a little bit similar to what I just said, but like actually like packaging them up as gifts because you know, your maybe your I don't know, mother-in-law, I'm just picking a random family member here is like, oh, I really need birthday cards. And you're like, come up to my craft room, pick some birthday cards. Oh no, no, I couldn't pose. But if you give it to her as a gift, then she, you know, she has to take it. So, um, yeah. Anyway, um, I would suggest packaging them up by similar themes. And some people like to do mixed and kind of got to get to know the people that you are giving them to. But, like, they're making a whole bunch of thank you cards, birthday cards. They don't have to look the same. Like, I have, like, kind of sets that are, like, really similar because they were made at the same time or made with the same sketch. I think that's fine, especially when you're giving, like, thank you or birthday cards because a lot of times people do buy packs like that. Like, they'll buy a pack of 20 exactly the same thank you cards. Um, teachers are a great one to gift thank you cards to. It sounds kind of funny because but when I was a teacher, you know, you'd receive things and help and all that throughout the year. I sent a lot of thank you cards. And so... You know, and some of them were thanking people for gifts with the thank you cards. So I would, I probably wouldn't send you your own card back, you know, in that situation. But, um, yeah, so like coming up, like thinking about the individual. What do they like to do? Some people really like having those very special birthday cards or something like that. And packaging them up nicely. I'm kind of guilty of being bad at this. Like, uh, last couple times I've made sets, I just kind of put them in the same bags I store my stamps in. And they're like tough plastic bags, so they'll last a while, but they're not the prettiest. And they make pretty bags and pretty boxes that you can gift them. You could tie some ribbon around it. I usually just kind of slip them in there. Make sure you put envelopes. This is a definitely, I mean, like most people do use envelopes to send their cards. So these ones I'm going to actually donate. But I'd put them in here. And what I usually do is just seal it up put a little washi in the back. Maybe I put a little like description of what's in them or something like that. But this way also the person has an easy way of storing them because if they, uh, you know, leave the birthday cards, a little pack of them in their car and then they forget that they needed one, it's there, it's ready to go and it's protected by this nice sturdy bag here. You see that I have a problem with remembering to send stuff and like, surely, you know, if you just leave everything in your car, you'll never forget anything for people. All right, guys, hopefully one of these five ideas works. Um, we can get some of these stacks of cards out of the craft room into the hands of some people who they will make smile, enjoy them. Um, grab the free jokes. Grab the addresses. Get your free people to celebrate. Maybe get, buy the trackers if that's a fun thing for you. They're uh, inexpensive at the Etsy shop. Put all your stamps here. Buy those additional ounce stamps. I mean, again, I know that's kind of a U.S. only thing, but maybe not. But, like, that's a lifesaver because you're like, oh, is this card too thick? Nope, stop, stop extra stamp on it. We don't want any excuses. If I have to bring it to the mail, if you have to bring it to the post office to get it weighed, I'm never going to send it. So, I like that. Um, yeah. If you found this video inspiring, here's another video where you can find more ideas for enjoying your crafty time and supplies. Let me know you like this video with a share to your crafty community. Subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss the next template or tutorial. And check the video description for product links. See you in the next video.